the National Restaurant Association Show. I'm Jamie with Informa Connect, and we are here with Gilberto from V&V Supremo Foods. So tell us a little bit about your company. Well, uh, we've been in business since 1964. It was founded by my father and my uncle, uh, wow. two immigrants from uh, Michoacan, the state of Michoacan. Um, basically, uh, they started servicing the Mexican community in the Pilsen and the greater Chicago area. Uh, making initially uh, queso fresco, and then it kind of grew from there. And uh, basically, you know, we've been serving the, the, the community. Now, we not only service the, the Mexican, but really a cross-section broad all across the country. We have customers from Maine to California to upstate Washington, um, very mainstream. So let's talk about authenticity. Um, your your products oh, must be like Absolutely. extremely authentic. Absolutely. I'd have to say, the, the one thing that the, both my father and my uncle were very, very adamant about was really servicing the, the, the Mexican community within the Pilsen and, and the greater Chicago area. And I will say the, the immigrants in, Me in uh, Chicago are first generation immigrants. So their, uh, their demand for quality was definitely there. When they had already been there, there, there had been uh, previous uh, competitors that had already been in, the, in Chicago area for 50 years. So a lot of people were like, what are you doing? What are you coming in trying to compete with these people that have been here forever? Unfortunately, those people, for them, had already lost touch with what was authentic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably why they, as soon as uh, my, a lot of what my father and my uncle did was they sold on, con on a concession, meaning that they put product out and they basically were telling the retailers, hey, listen, if it doesn't sell, don't worry about it. We'll take it back. But, you know, let it let the, let the consumer choose. And ultimately, they chose our product, even though there was a company that had already been in existence for well over 50 years at that time. Um, and so clearly the products that we were making at the time resonated with those consumers. And ultimately, it's the same product that we're making now it resonates with consumers. And it really brings back memories. In fact, I have to say what we do, you know, although we do make product and we do sell it, in reality, what we do is we bring I would have to say um, great memories with great products. And, and that's kind of our, our motto and how we approach mm -hmm. things. One of our campaigns previously was um, um, share some love, in essence. Uh, and that's what it was. And it really was about that, that, that mm -hmm. campaign because uh, we believe that our product is, is, is so um, just so authentic and so reminiscent of what products were many, many years ago in Mexico. And out of curiosity, you know, what is trending right now? Like, what are you seeing? Well, I mean, first of all, I, I'm sure anybody who's been in the restaurant industry or food industry, for that matter, I think um, it's pretty pretty well known that uh, Mexican food right now is the fastest growing category, mm -hmm. fastest growing sector in, in the United States. And I think on some level, even, on, even globally, uh, Mexican food is just really doing incredibly well. It's very hot. Um, it's becoming much more mainstream. I, I mean, Mexican food today is not what it was even 10 years ago. It really has, um, you can go up into Appleton, Wisconsin, go to, mm -hmm. uh, to a little restaurant and you'll find quesadillas. You know, yeah. you'll find potentially even tacos in a, mm -hmm. in a regular sit down restaurant that, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, you would never think of ever finding mm -hmm. something like that. So clearly Mexican food is actually a very much a comfort food for many, many people. In fact, I'd have to say right now during the, um, just recently with the, with the pandemic having happened, uh, there were surveys that were conducted, and um, basically a, a lot of people really, the, the number one food that people gravitated towards is Mexican food. Just It just was. Uh, I, I'm not going to say why. I just, I'm just saying. All the flavors. It, it, well, the flavors. I mean, really, and, yeah. it's not like Absolutely. a bland food. Yeah. You know, we're talking about, you know, Mexican food, but, like, it can be applied more than just in, like, a traditional oh, dish. Absolutely. You know, if you go to our website, vvsupremo.com, um, we have hundreds of recipes, and that's the beauty of what our product has really done. It has really um, crossed over to mass market. We have distribution. Uh, not only do we sell into many restaurants, yeah. but uh, we, which we service our, 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 our customers through, whether it's Cisco Foods, um, you name it, uh, all of the main broadliners out there, we, we currently have product in distribution. But from a retail standpoint, um, we're in, uh, you know, Costco, we're in Walmart, you know, we're in um, all the major retailers yeah. out there. Um, and, and so the the, the product, um, re it really resonates with not just Latinos, not just Hispanics, but it really crosses over to everyone because it melts incredibly in, in such a way that it's so unique and it makes the best quesadillas. In fact, I'm going to have to say our, our quesadilla cheese 
we sell more quesadilla cheese than any other company in the United States, which is a, a pretty big statement, okay? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we're competing with the big boys here. And so to be in that category and to know that pound for pound, we sell more in the whole United States, more quesadilla than anyone else. And, I, and I'll tell you why. Because we were the innovators who brought that product to market. Um, I would say in, in the greater Midwest, more his more quesadilla cheese is sold than any other cheese in chicago natural cheeses our chihuahua brand quesadilla cheese is the number one natural cheese sold i mean it yeah. outsells everybody else so it, it just tells you how it connects that can't be with just hispanics that is everybody because mm -hmm. they truly enjoy it um, you can't be in a costco and not sell to everywhere and so right. that's really where we're, we're, we're resonating across all segments, all markets, not just Latinos. Yeah, well, it's a testament to your product and your ingredients. As we know, operational costs are very important. Absolutely. And how does VMV Supremo Foods really help operators yeah. in that situation? Absolutely. Well, listen, definitely you want to have a product that is versatile and can be used in multiple dishes that adds value. But, you know, at the end of the day, also, it is about con your client retention. Because you, you can have people come in, they try your food, they like it, and maybe they'll come once, maybe they'll come twice, but they won't come back. So part of what we do is when you really choose to go with top of the line, really an, ex, an, an a, a dynamic, incredible experience, it provides that unique experience that creates that opportunity for consumers to come back and come back and come back. What we bring to the table of it's not just filling a void, it's really bringing that wow experience to consumers such that they want to recommend your restaurant to come over. You got to check this out. You got to have this product. You really, that's what it's about. At the end of the day, it is about that that experience with that consumer. What's next for V&V Supremo well, Foods? Well, you know what? Um, we are right now in the midst of, I'm very excited about this, and uh, we are about to launch a chicken chorizo, and it's amazing. In fact, we, we've got a pre- uh, advertising that we're putting out. We're really trying to get the whole industry excited about it. Um, I don't know if you know, but I mean, ch ch uh, ch um, chicken is a big deal. It's a big deal. Poultry, um, a lot of people don't want to eat beef, don't want to eat pork, mm -hmm. but they will consume chicken. And so part of what we wanted to do, we didn't, we're, we weren't first to the to the game in this regard. There are other people out there with chicken chorizos, but yeah, they're really, in my opinion, I've tasted them, and most of them, they, they just don't taste like chorizo. They taste more like a, um, a seasoned chicken, per se. Mm -hmm. um, you, different altogether, not quite a chorizo. Whereas the product that we're, we're launching, if I didn't tell you that it was chorizo, you would go, come on, are you kidding me? This has got to be chorizo. It really is. It's that good. And so that's what, it, it's very authentic. It's just the flavors, the texture, the mouthfeel, everything, the total experience around that truly is reminiscent of the original pork chorizo, but it's in chicken. So it's really exciting. I think this is going to be very innovative. It's going to really provide a lot of excitement to the category mm -hmm. and a lot of opportunities in so many different ways because, you, you know, you can use this, whether it's in a chili, whether it's in, um, you name it, add it as into meatballs. There's so many different ways that it can be used uh, that it's just so exciting from a retail and food service perspective. I'm sure it's so delicious. Oh, it, it really, it really is. <laughs> so thank you so much, Gilberto, for joining us today. And we enjoyed having you. Thank you, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.